All right, so we've done the problem statement, and we've done the human algorithm, and we've tested that in our flowchart, and everything works perfectly, so now it's the time to code. Uh, coding a decision is uh, a little bit more different, a little different than what we've done before, so let's go ahead and take a look at it, but most of the same uh, things apply. And so we put in our JavaScript, and then we create our places in memory, and where do we get those? Uh, we're going to get them from our input, so I'll go ahead and copy and paste, comma space, copy and paste, comma space. Don't need that yes and no, that's just going to be part of our question. I'll copy and paste, and I'll end that here. Um, well, let's, go, so let's keep going. Um, I have rate, because it's not that much. <coughs> Comma space. And then the last thing is final fee. And we can fit that all in one line, so why not? And then I end it with a semicolon. Okay, so we have uh, number of dogs, number of hours, weekday, final fee, and I must have copied over rate. All right, so there we go. All right, so that is our um, blank places of memory that we need. And the next thing we're going to do is put in our assumptions. And those are the two rates that we have here, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy these. And paste them in. And then I'm going to put var in front of both of them because I'm going to declare these places in memory and then put something in them all in one step. And semicolons at the end. All right, so now we're ready for our input. When we have three input to do, first one is number of dogs. So I copy that and paste it in. And I want to assign to that place in memory what's returned from my prompt when I ask the question, how many dogs? Question mark, close quote. And my second argument is the default value. And I'm just going to do quote space quote and then end my line, parenthesis and semicolon. All right, then the next one is the number of hours. I'll copy that paste it in. Okay, and I need, might as well take the rest of this and copy it down. The only thing I ought to change is how many hours, because we won't have a default value for that either. And then my last one is going to be weekday. I want to assign to that place of memory what's returned from my prompt when I ask the question, <coughs> is it the weekday question mark? Um, and then yes slash no. Um, and then my default value is going to be yes. Um, <coughs> whenever you're going to be doing a decision and you want them to answer a certain way, uh, we always put what we want them to type in in that prompt. Um, if you just said, is it a weekday, um, and they go, um, yeah, and they type that in, it's going to be a, as if they typed in no. So we're going to um, always put in uh, into the question what we want them to type. All right, so that's that's that. And now our calculations. Okay, on this one, we're going to have to make a decision. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy, actually, the calculation section. And I'm going to paste it in. And then what I'm going to do is something I call JavaScriptizing it. And that is, I'm going to be taking this, because it's already in JavaScript syntax, and I'm going to add the parentheses I need to let them know that this is what I want them to test. There is no then at the end, and there's no semicolon at the end. Okay, all there is is the parentheses and the test. Remember, when I say 
Uh, I have a place of memory called number dogs. Please assign to that place of memory what's returned from my prompt. This equal sign means assign to. So we don't want it to assign yes to weekday. We want to find out if it's equal to that. So we're going to put two equal signs in. This is going to be the bane of your existence. Just remember, if it's always true, it's because uh, no matter what you type in, it's because you only have a single equal sign. When we have an if, we have to let it know that we're starting our if with a brace. And that is a shift one over from the character P. If it's true, I want to do this. So we end that with a semicolon. And then I use a close brace to stop it. Else, I do the same thing. I have to start it, add a semicolon, and then I have to stop it. Notice also I indent what I'm going to be doing inside that decision. It's important that you use these indentions. The computer doesn't care, but it makes your code so much more easier to understand for a person coming after you, and that's one of the things we're trying to do is make our code uh, easily maintainable. Right? And then I have final fee, and all I have to do is put a semicolon at the end. So how is that easy for, for coding? And the last thing I have is my output. And we only have one thing output and then we have one one thing to do document dot write and then in a parentheses I'm gonna do open and close parentheses semicolon and I just need to go into my <coughs> uh, flowchart and copy what I have in here so remember that when you're coding since it works in your flowchart it'll work in your code so the best thing to do is do document write open and close parentheses semicolon and then paste in whatever you had in your flowchart. And now that should work for time, first time every time. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. All right, I have um, two dogs and 10 hours. And yes, it's a weekday. So that's two times, two times 10 times five. So that's 20 times five is 100. And we have to test it again to see if the other side works. Go back to editor. Okay, we'll have two dogs, 10 hours. This time we'll say no. And it's twice as much, $200. So that means that since it's double the rate, and that's two times 10 is 20, times 10 is 200. So this all works. So just remember that. Another thing I want you to point, point out in this is, um, if instead of weekday rate, I had five here, instead of weekend rate, I had 10, and I run it, and I have two dogs, 10 hours, yes. You see, it works fine. The problem is, these numbers shouldn't be down here. As we assign all our constants up here for a reason, and that is so that if later on they need to increase the rates, a person doesn't have to go looking through my code trying to figure out where those rates are. Um, it seems obvious with just a small line of code, but imagine if there's thousands of lines of code, um, we wouldn't want a person to have to sit there and go through it. And if we had numbers all throughout our code, they wouldn't know if the five that they see there is the five rate or it's a five something else. Um, So we always go ahead and assign our constants up above, and then we just reference those in our code. If you don't, you're a bad coder, and you're coding inefficiently. All right, that's it.